Does the ceiling ever come down here? Does the ceiling ever come down in here? Like, no, it's, no, this has been my protecting thing behind me. We can go further, but... Yeah. I think we can This tunnel was erected in 1914, so it's trolleys. So it's, you know, over 100 years old, which is great. It lasts a really long time. Uh, but it does have some deferred maintenance. And so this grant, along with previous grants that we've been awarded from the Federal Transit Administration is going to allow us to make improvements so it can last another hundred years. But again, take advantage of technology so that our drivers can pass through safely. Um, we have a bus to go by. <laughs> but this tunnel is the... What is that? It's a working tunnel. It's a working tunnel, right. We've got uh, six or seven bus routes that are going through here, not only connecting Fair Street but beyond. So buses that go to East Providence. There's about 4,500 passengers a day that pass through this tunnel. So it's a lot of mileage going through here. We actually get to report this mileage to the federal government because it is exclusive right of way, which generates more dollars in federal funds to our state. Um, an exclusive right of way is what makes transit more competitive with cars. If we didn't have the tunnel, we wouldn't be able to go up the grade to the east side and we'd have to take a very long detour, which would cost our system a lot of money every year. So the use of this tunnel is critical to providing an attractive system. Uh, and Brown and RISD students ride Ripto with their student IDs, so it makes it really convenient to get back and forth. This grant's for $900,000. Yeah. Planning, uh, engineering, preliminary engineering. That's right. Uh, but in the last part, on the appropriation bill, uh, my subcommittee, we put in $20 billion nationally. We increased your formula grant, so you, you should get $3 million back to operate. That's right. We increased Tiger Grant, or we increased the, the grant program that's providing this money, so you can apply for additional resources. That's right. We have about a million already to make some incremental capital improvements, but this design grant is going to allow us to to get that plan in place to take advantage of future federal funds to do even more in the tunnel. So. We're last, off and running. The last time we did major work was about 30 years ago. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Yep. So this is, again, safe, need to be modernized for both driver safety, and we've got great drivers here. Tom, thank you and your medical. Yeah. Oh, they're terrific. I go way back. My great-grandfather, my grandfather was a motor man. Yeah, the United Electric Railroad wow. on both sides. Oh, wow. So, yeah. so they probably came through this tunnel on opening sure day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little late getting here. But, uh, uh, no, it's great. And I, again, I think it's part of the infrastructure we need. And as you point out, Amy, uh, this actually adds to the reimbursement of forming because right. it's dedicated transit. That's right. The Federal Transit Administration gives, gives communities extra points when you put in exclusive right of way for transit. And that's exactly what we're doing here by providing this tunnel service. And this is also going to connect to the uh, rapid transit to the city. That's right. Uh, the city, we are about to go out for construction this summer for a, with a Tiger grant that we also got from the feds, or a downtown transit connector. And that those investments are coupled with investments the city's making in Kennedy Plaza. This is a straight shot to the plaza, and so the city, as part of their work, will be helping us to connect the tunnel to the plaza and create even more exclusive right of way for buses coming into downtown. So it's this is uh, we should be doing more of this nationwide, but particularly here in Rhode Island. And this is a project that has obvious benefit. We'll put people to work immediately doing the repairs, mm -hmm. and then it will provide we hope another 30 years of rapid transit and moving people around. I heard this figure about 10% of your traffic each day goes through this tunnel. That's correct. So That's correct. And we want to see the traffic build up and part of it yeah. is making sure you have modern facilities and modern information systems. So. Yeah, there's, and there's 4,000 bus stops in the state. Fair Street is number six in the statewide system. So a significant amount of people are going through in terms of usage. And so we will also be making improvements at both ends of the tunnel for passengers who are waiting for the bus. We want to have proper shelters, have them be accessible and safe places to wait for the bus. So that'll be part of this investment as well. So the intention is just to <coughs> repair the tunnel. You're not 
you're not changing the dimensions or anything. You just do you want to put a, a median strip down the middle or something? Yeah, I mean, our chief of security has done some initial review, and we've been looking at best practices elsewhere. I don't know if we'll have a full median built. As you can see, it's pretty narrow already. We want to keep bi-directional movement, though, for sure. We want to be able to flow in both directions. But I think lighting, advanced guidance technology, those are the things that we'll be looking at to improve safety. Right now, sometimes you'll have mirror on mirror, so to speak, no major accidents, thank goodness, but certainly it's, it, we want to make this as easy as possible for our drivers to get through. And there's technology, I presume, that could cue the other bus to slow down and let you know, all those yeah. things be done. Yeah, and this is the only tunnel that I know of in Rhode Island, so again, we're, you know, gonna, we're leading the way here, but certainly there's a lot of technology out there that we can take advantage of. Are there any other exclusive bus lanes in Rhode Island? There are not, but when we build the downtown transit connector with our Tiger Grant, we'll be putting in about a mile of exclusive bike, uh, bus lanes, red painted red bus lanes in the downtown area. So near the new Wexford development, uh, connecting Kennedy Plaza to the train station. So that's the direction we're moving in, exclusive right of way, looking to make that bus as competitive with the car as possible. And that increases the formula of share. Sure does. So that it's a double, it's better transportation and there are more federal formula money coming in every year. So it's a win-win. Uh, what's oh, your name? Amy Patin. I'm the acting Amy, CEO. The acting CEO of this, uh, Senator, what do you think of what you're seeing here inside the tunnel? Well, I have uh, been around the tunnel all my life. I used to wait to get picked up from Rhode Island Design to school when I was five years old, right above here. So I'm familiar with the tunnel. Just about as far as I've got inside. <laughs> uh, but this is representative of uh, a lot of our infrastructure. It's very important very valuable, but it needs to be upgraded, modernized. Uh, it's still safe, uh, but we want to make it useful for the next 30 or 40 years. And it's not just this tunnel and rapid transit. We have the same issue when it comes to sewer lines, municipal water lines. We, we've got a big, big task ahead of us. In this appropriations bill, the Alphabet bill, we put a lot of money in relative to the appropriations bill, but we're still waiting for the, the the president's proposed 1.5 trillion, that doesn't seem to materialize. So we're doing year by year as much as we can.